Now, the, the kind of workshop that you're going to be doing, um, how much time do you have? Is it like two hours for three, three hours? Yeah. Okay, well, that's even better. So you yeah. can get more interaction. So this, this is a format I developed long ago when uh, an engineering firm up in New York said, I've got 90 people, you've got two hours, and I want to introduce people to core clarity. And of course, I said, sure, no problem. <laughs> you always do. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But what I found is it's one of the most fun uh, kinds of formats that I do. So if you think of this almost as much as entertainment, improv, playing off the audience, because the primary purpose for this particular format is to give people a really good introduction and get them interested so that they want to go deeper with it. And the, the primary charts, now I'm assuming everyone's going to have a coaching packet. Mm -hmm. So they'll have their plastic laminated pyramid in there and they will have the team charts. So for, for some of the setup, I, I, you know, I make sure that they have those. Right. Uh, and now, are they going to have the total company chart, or are they just going to have their own team chart? Uh, so this is a group of, they call them individuals, because they are not any of the management groups. Yeah. So we've got three groups so far. We've got the, the principals, or they call that one senior management. Then they have the associates and directors. Yep. Kurt's been working with those two groups, as have you. Um, and I've been working with the group they call the, the project lead slash managers. Now, this is everyone else. So they just the individual group. So this so, is not this is this is kind of a, a separate group. It's not the whole company. It's it is the whole company. So, OK, so you've had each of those other groups. Each of those three groups have already been through uh, at least a 90 minute unpack, if not a three hour workshop already, because I've done the three hour workshop with. Um, um, actually, Kurt and I have both done them with both other, other groups. So then you've got those people that are in the audience as well as the 35 who have not even had the most basic introduction or any, even an unpack. Okay, right? perfect. So okay. that's the combination. So what I'm trying to establish is what kind of documents are they going to have? Are they going to have the charts with the whole company, with just their team? Are they going to see the leadership charts? Their packages are the individual coaching packages. As far as I know, that's all they've got. I don't know. They may give, and I would say they'll have the team chart for the individuals because that's what Tanya produced for me. Okay. So that's what usually she sends to Lisa. Okay. So, so, what that, so what that tells me is how much you can depend on their, um, the documents that they've got in their folder and play off of that and how much you're going to have right. to do a slide deck. Exactly. So the slide deck piece to it, uh, what I would recommend is you have the core key, the enhanced core key. So that's, right. the, that's, this, yeah. doc, that's sure. this, this document here. Yeah. Uh, you have the leadership team and the order that I would have those. Uh, so you have the, the principal team, in other words. Uh, okay. So the order I would have is the, uh, the, the core drills first. Core drills, really, yeah. before yeah. even doing the talents. Okay. Yeah, core drills first. Yeah. So, okay. and the reason is we're, we're kind of going from broad into specific. Okay. So, if they take away something, if they understand leadership styles, that gets them in and gives them a framework and context that they can play with already. And you can have fun with trailblazers and right. forces of nature. And so... Mm -hmm instead of getting into the weeds first and you know some people identifying with the specific talent this is most people can identify with the core drills okay the second thing i will have that i will list is the um the overall team chart for the leadership team okay for the principal so team Okay, for the principles. So that would be senior leadership. Yeah, so the reason now what you're doing is, is telling, giving them insight into the behavior of the team in general. Right, 
This is what we yep. know about the team. And people are going to identify. Now, part of my setup is to find a couple good sports. Uh, you know, people that you can use as examples and have some fun with, you know, the, here's what they look like on their best day. Here's, you know, here's what they look like when, you know, uh, they're blue, they don't, they're blueless, clueless, or here's what they look like when they're under pressure or the shadow side or just not paying attention, whatever you want to do, but find a couple of people that you can have some good natured fun with. And, and let them know ahead of time. Okay. So part of that, you know, so, so that's the third piece. You've gone through the core, the core key, and I'll, I'll walk through that in a minute. Then you've gone through the core drills in general, each of their leadership styles. So people understand what is a core, what is an archetype. And I call them leadership archetypes because right. unless you're in Texas or Oklahoma, you probably don't know what a core drill is. Uh, so I go through the individuals there and then I go through the team and then I get into the individual dynamics of the team itself. So I'll pull up the principal leadership team. Okay. And that's where you need to have a couple good nature, have some fun with. Okay. And by, by going through their talents and looking at some of the unique combinations of in the individuals uh, and picking out some that, that really people know well, uh, you're already starting to get into the talents and you're already starting to talk about the interaction and the dynamics of the talents. Um, and, uh, you know, like Michael Dula, for example, and I know he's not a principal, uh, but he is an Illuminario. Well, that's a great one to have fun with because there's not many of them. Right. And so Michael, you look at Michael and he's, you know, I'd say a good day for him is just being with people all day long, making them feel great, warm and fuzzy. And he may even be a hugger. Now you want to find that out ahead of time. But this is a little bit where you do the magic trick stuff. Okay. Where people who know them and you unpack Bob Fox or right. Andy or some, some of the other people. I know Andy pretty well too. Yeah. And so he's got a different kind of style because it's a bridge and ear. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. And Bob's and then, a force of nature, isn't he? Bob's a force of nature and the yeah. blueless clueless he's familiar with. I've done it many right. times and he likes, you know, and just recognize clear, direct, uh, confident, uh, gets through. Uh, if you have blue, then your tendency will be to try to deliver news the way you would want to receive it. So you might hold back a bit. And for a force of nature, a trailblazer, even a guru, that will be m misunderstood, misinterpreted, or missed altogether because it's nuanced. And clear, direct is what you need. So that helps get into a little bit and you're also introducing uh, uh, rules of engagement a little bit. How do you speak to a force of nature? Um, the difference between a force of nature and a sage like Andy. And, and so this is a great place to help them see the difference in the leadership styles and a few of their key talents. And then the final sheet that I use to actually go through the specific talents. Mm -hmm is the summary statistics. Okay. And I, I preface it by saying, uh, you know, I tell them what it is and why it's valuable. And I say, you know, you've got the talents ordered by the, the dominance in the group. So you've got a group percentage, you've got the national or the international database percentage. And then I give example, when I look at a group of this, I look at the top five to eight. That gives me their, their fingerprint or their DNA. And I specifically look for big differences between the international database and the group database because those are markers. Those are things that this group does particular specifically. Um, and then I will start going down the talents. And for example, the first one here is Achiever. When right. I, 
get to that point, and I will ask how many have achiever. Right. Okay. Uh, go to your bullet points. Which bullet point do you think uh, captures you on your best day? A um, couple of examples. You know, just a couple of examples of that. Uh, and then you go down to the next one, strategic. So that's the order of things. And now I'll back up and go into kind of the, the, the unpack of some of this. Okay. And again, I, I, this, is, this is probably my most fun because this is, this is the magic trick. This is uh, the, you know, you're, you're giving a higher percentage of ahas per minute. You know, it's really lots of, oh, aha, and stuff like that. So when we start with the enhanced core drill, and it all starts here, and you give a little background and differentiate between the Clifton strengths, uh, why we like them, um, that they are about strengths, that the philosophy is play to your strengths. Uh, we believe in, in or, that organizations that focus on developing strengths do better than those that try to uh, uh, manage people by focusing on what they don't do well. We feel this is a great tool to help people get in the right seat in the bus or to modify or adapt their role to better play to their strengths. We like it for a lot of reasons. And it's highly granular. So unlike, and, and you can ask, you know, some of you may have taken DISC or some of the sure. others. And so what makes this different is that it's really measuring your natural talents, what you naturally do best and enjoy most. So even though we, we can infer personality, this is not a personality assessment. This is how you reach your highest potential and, and experience your highest fulfillment in the workplace. And now we're giving you a language and a structure to help you intentionally play to your strengths. Because most people have a general idea of what their strengths are, what they like to do, but not with the kind of understanding and knowledge of why that is a strength and how to develop it. And that's what this is about. Say what you said again, you were saying right seat on the bus or you didn't say accommodation, you said something else. Yeah, so how to adapt the role. Adapt, right, that was the word, adapt so, role. So remember, a lot of people are in roles that do things and you can right. have a very personable architect or a doctor or you can have a very detailed, both equally successful, right. as long as they're playing to their strengths and they're aware of of when they're outside that and they have their uh, enough emotional awareness, emotional intelligence to know that uh, when they're outside that domain where they're naturally strong, they're tapping into other talents. They're using a system, for example, if they have adaptability and connectedness and, and uh, restorative, uh, they may need a, a goal management or some kind of system to keep them on task and, and hit deadlines. Uh, right. And, or else an arranger keeps arranging and, and a, right. an restorative keeps fixing and taking apart and putting back together and all that. There's a shadow side to all. So right. that's the key part is to understand okay. where your sweet spot is, where it's not, and then what are your adaptive uh, strategies, whether it's a tool a skill or partnering with people. And that's core clarities, process, partner, and uh, what's the other There's one? There's three Ps. Yeah, uh, it, it has to do with your talents, but it's- Partner, process, shoot. So for me, for example, the fact that my empathy and harmony are 33 and 34, okay? And, <clears throat> and people are surprised and say, well, gee, but what I use, what I compensate with is relator learner, right. right? Curiosity about someone and connecting with them. So it takes me longer to know what it's like to walk in their shoes, but that's how I do it. And I've had to learn to do that. Uh, and it's now natural. It's second nature to me. So it, it can look like I have empathy and it's an empathy is not the fact that you don't care uh, because everybody cares in their own way. Uh, 
like the five love languages. But uh, the way I, I get, it, get to understand someone is through my curiosity and building trust. Um, and that's what empathy is really about, is that instinctive ability to understand where someone's coming from, how they're feeling, and to, and to help give articulation to that. So now we're, we're into the, uh, the, the enhanced core key, which is... So you do that first, then you do the core drills? Yeah. So right. th this, is, this is the language. So now right. we're moving into, so why core clarity? And why core clarity is because of the granularity of Strength Finder, not many people on their own can figure out how to use it individually or in a group or team or organizational setting. So what Core Clarity did is take this very elegant system, make this very elegant system, and recognize that the talents naturally fall into four quadrants, and I call them languages. Yeah. The reason I call them languages is if you don't have a talent in the quadrant, you don't get it, like the blue. If you don't have talents in that blue, you don't naturally speak any of those uh, languages, and you just don't pick up on those nonverbal cues. So the first thing I talk about is that there's a top half. And the top half are those talents that come alive when you're engaged with people. So I will ask, how many enjoy, have a great day when they're with people all day long? How many of you have three or more of your talents in that top half? So this is a great, uh, you know, this is a, a great interactive people can see and it's visible to the whole company. Oh, these are our people, people. Oh yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. But you've already picked out a few who have four or five talents in that top half where you can go to and say, okay, Jim or Barbara, uh, I imagine a great day for you is uh, have connecting with others, being on team projects, sharing ideas, going to lunch with others, making people feel great. And, you know, and you can see them smile in the bucket and everybody recognize. So now people have a visible uh, example of what, what you're talking about. Okay. Got it. And then I'll talk about, now there's a differentiation on those top. You know, you've got the blue quadrant, the talents that are called connect. And I call those relationship talents. And it's a very important relationship. These are the people who have intuitive understanding of the nonverbal characteristics that make great relationships. And if you have time, you can translate, you know, the ability to connect verbally in an emotional way with people. Uh, the ability to put yourself in someone else's shoes and understand how they feel and give articulation to that. The ability to sense alignment or misalignment or hidden agendas or politics. Uh, the ability to, to sense that, hey, there's somebody missing in this group that we need to bring in. Uh, the ability to instinctively know uh, what makes this person unique and where they fit on a team uh, and, and who they play well together instinctively. Uh, the, the ability to, to put teams together instinctively and naturally. Uh, the instinctive ability to know who can be trusted uh, or who may not be trusted, the, the bullshit sniffing meter, um, and the, the instinctive ability to know who, who's reliable, who's going to be loyal, who's going to pull through, who you can count on, or who not. These people have these instinctive relationships, and these are the kinds of relationships that keep teams and people um, working well together and when they're functioning well they are the the oil and the grease and the glue that make relationships work well okay so that's the blue and then I'll move over to the magenta talents uh, and so the magenta talents are relational different than relationship they're relational because they do understand people extremely well they pick up on how people tick so to speak but the energy that the mobilized or the magenta talents have is to bring that potential out of them. So they have radar on people, talent and people capabilities and their radar is to bring them out. And so I'll divide those into two categories and the soft, ta the soft talents and the hard talents. 
And these are the motivational talents. These are the inspirational talents. These are the get your butt going talents. And so you've got three soft talents in the positivity, <laughs> the, the winning people over, and the uh, developer, the coaching talent. And again, I'll translate these, you know, the, the person who makes you feel well, who remembers and celebrates your wins and successes, who says, thank you. That's the positivity, the winning others over the person who finds common, common connection, builds rapport, and is that ultimate networker and connector, the bumblebee in the group that goes from flower to flower, passing along what they find and gets energized by that energy. Uh, the hard talents now that sense of excellence and that strive that nothing nothing less than excellence and it's visceral and people find that uh they have maximizer if somebody's doing something that is okay and they know they can do better their whole energy drains and it's visible and it's palpable on their face on the other hand they appreciate and get so excited and so jazzed when something is really nice and and detailed and at, at its best. Yep. Uh, uh, the competition talent, setting those external measures of what success looks like, instinctively knowing if we're, if we're moving at the right pace to make success, if we've got the right team to achieve what we need. So the energy level is when we do, it keeps driving and keeping score and keeping us on track and, and winning. Uh, losing is more of a, a you know, hating to lose is stronger than loving to win for these people. But conversely, if those uh, conditions are not there, if it's not the right team, if the conditions for success aren't there, if they're falling behind, then the energy or the stress begins to raise. Right. And then finally, command. Uh, command is the talent that gives clear directions, doesn't mind conflict to get the right results. Uh, it, it, takes charge, will take risk, uh, will charge the mountain. Um, and unless there's a clear person in command, they will tend to want to fill the vacuum. This is the shadow side. Sure. And so th that's where it can create problems. So now we've gone through the top part of it and described them. And, and you know, f knowing what you know on the, on the um, summary statistics, you can pick a few, chair, just cherry pick a few, how many have this? Or, or pick a few that are more colorful and how many have it? What does it feel like? What does it look like? Again, it's, it's playing off the audience, what the audience will give you. Uh, and, and so you're probably going to come to the conclusion, as I do with a lot of my contractors and architects, that maybe 20% of the room has three or more talents in the top half. And so you, you make that observation, say, okay, it looks like we've got about 20%. What does that mean? And just let it, let the crowd unpack what that means, the good and the bad. Well, we need these people. Or, yeah, I, I feel like I'm the odd person out. Whatever it is, <clears throat> these are some of the conversations that you're hoping to gather. Now, the... The bottom half is, is the next part. Then you go to the bottom half. Those are the internal talents. Uh, you've got the green reflect on the left side, and you've got the orange energized. I call them the get or done talents on the right. Mm -hmm. So I just summarize that as think and do, think and do. And the more talents you have on that bottom half, uh, the more people like to be left alone, uh, left to their own devices. Uh, have time to think and plan, uh, have tangible outcomes that they have control over. Uh, they like to see things get done uh, and they like to see plans come alive. And so the energy tends to be internal and the more they can spend time doing that, and you can use yourself as an example, or I use myself as an example, mm -hmm. because I've got four of my five in the top. And, <clears throat> you know, I, I will the top talk, or the bottom? I mean, the at bottom. the bottom. Yeah, yeah, I've got four of my five on the bottom. Same. And uh, I'll sometimes use the story of Nathan and I in Culver City when we had a workshop with a group. And uh, I was engaging and 
sharing and talking and interacting all day long. Nathan, who has three blue talents and is a bridgeoneer or a sage, and two green talents, was pretty quiet all day, couldn't say anything. Uh, we get into the car, we're heading back to the hotel, I go silent. Uh, Nathan's not sure what's wrong, he thinks maybe dad is upset, maybe, maybe he did something that wasn't right, and he, he said, dad, why do you go from engaged dad in the workshop to boring dad in the car? <clears throat> and because we have the language, uh, one, he had a way to ask me a question that he may have misinterpreted as dad being pissed off. But number two, I had a way of understanding where he was coming from. And my response to him was, Nathan, that's a great question. Let me think for a minute. I think what happened is that I have one blue talent my relator talent. I spent that was that group. <clears throat> and I'm drained. I'm positively drained, but I'm drained. So when I got in the car, my natural recovery mode is to go in my head, the three green talents. So I'm processing. Now, the good news about knowing about this is that I have some talents that allowed me to re, re shift my energy and re engage. One was strategic. That's my top. So I was able to set a new goal, right? What, mm -hmm. was the, what was my new goal now in the car now that Nathan brought this up? Engage with Nathan. Right. And then achiever. Okay, let's get it going. Relator. Let's, let's rebuild the trust. So I started asking him because of his greens. I said, Nathan, what did you see? What went well? Uh, what would you do different? We had an engaging conversation. So if you have a story like that, where whether it's with a colleague or family where you can talk about uh, how your mode how you recover and then open up the question and have them talk to each other about so how do you recover where do you go which quadrant do you go into which half do you go into to recover uh, that's a great conversation for the group to have once you've broached that so going into the green talents again you can talk about there's a whole range of green talents. It's the biggest category. Yeah, There's huge. 12. So you've got high level green talents and you've got deep dive green talents. You've got forward looking green talents. You've got backward looking green talents. You've got random talents, creative talents, all in this mix. Um, and they're all fascinating to look at, but they all make people that's what makes them extremely unique and different in how they come to the same task, looking at the same thing that you would, but processing it completely differently. Yeah. And then you've got the, the get her done or the energize. And again, I, I talk about those that talents that have high sense of urgency, those that have st structure that can take complex things, those that get things done through conviction, uh, those that are goal oriented like achiever, uh, those that love to be in the moment and juggle and take whatever is going on now, uh, those who get laser focused, those who like to focus broken things, those who bring confidence and clarity to get things done, uh, those who really like to tackle things that are important and kind of leave a mark and, and people recognize them. Now, I just went through all of the talents. Significance, yeah. Yeah, without naming what they are. Right. Now, you can, Britain say, you know, you can't say achiever, you know, checklist, getting things done. But the, the, point, the point here is to introduce them to the lens and the framework. Right. Uh, and then I talk about how many have three or more talents on the right-hand side. You know, and so that's the magenta orange. So the right-hand side, the more talents you have there, the more you tend to be a little bit of type A, uh, the more you tend to want to drive things, push things through, uh, lead by direction, giving direction. Um, and then the left-hand side, the tendency there, uh, the leadership style is more about listening, responding, coaching, counseling, uh, and encouraging or influencing rather than directing that's a great way to see the difference in great. these two groups and likely in, in most cases most organizations have more people on the left hand side with the blue and green than they do in the right hand side but 
if you just got through this alone and created conversation around these different halves and the energy and, and how you recover and who's, who tends to be more type A and who tends to be more of the thinking, you know, you're getting That's people to connect dots and th think things together. And so, you know, and that's the magic. This is the magic. And, yeah. and, and this is where you can be highly interactive without having to go deep dive into stuff. Right. And just pause um, at each of these. And if you wanted to go even further and go into the quadrants, you could do that. You know, how right. many have two or more? I, I usually talk about that if you have one talent in a quadrant, it's a dialect. Okay. If you have two, two talents in a quadrant, it's fluent. If you have three, you're a savant. And so you can have fun, say, okay, how many savants do we have in the blue quadrant? How many have three or more? And then you just, oh my goodness, you know, you talk about what a good day is or how they go home feeling the weight of the world because they, they're, they're, they're the caretaker. What did you say was one talent? Uh, a dialect in that. Okay. Two is fluent. Got three, it. Three is a savant. Savant. Sorry, I just can't read. I wrote it down. I just can't read my freaking handwriting. <laughs> but it, it would be worthwhile pausing and just finding who, who the outliers are, those that have three blues, those that have three magentas. And if you don't have any with three magenta because there's only six, you can drop to two and just say, well, it's rare. So let's start out with three, see if there's anybody who's really off the charts. You pick uh, a quadrant. Does you go in any particular order? Um, I, I usually go clockwise starting with the top with connect. Okay. And go around to the thinking. Yeah. Okay. Now with, with the green, you know, you might want to start with four greens because there's 12 and just say, you know, who's, who's off the charts green. Okay. Okay. And I, I sometimes kid around, you know, with the, with the gurus because I know so many and I'm married to two, one. I have one as a, as, a, as a kid. You know, it's a beautiful mind. Right. You know, it's, it's Inception, the movie Inception. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if, if you got, you know, three or more mobilize, it's Terminator. Or if you've got heavy mobilize, energize, it's Terminator. Okay, slow down. Guru inception or it's a beautiful mind or yeah 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 uh the blue if you got three or more blues it's sleepless in seattle or harry met sally okay uh, if you've got lots of mobilized energize it's terminator especially if a pacemaker a, a pace setter but you, you know you can come up with your own. You probably have yeah. some better ones too, but I'll sometimes pause with that. But you can see with this piece alone with 60 people, yeah. you've unpacked a lot. Okay. So now you're going to introduce the concept of the leadership archetypes and what the value of those are. And the leadership archetype really does get more into looking a little bit at, at personality and style and you know the the top one of course is lifeline and i like to introduce these the lifeline for example it's the most common uh of those and when i look at a healthy team i tend to look for 50 percent of people being in the lifeline stabilizer mode uh, and then i just walk through the leadership team the executive you know the principal team right and look at, just in the order here, you've got the lifelines, we've got so many, it's, it's about average with the group, or it's way off, or there's less than, and we'll talk about the implications of that when we look at their team pyramid. But I talk about um, a lifeline as relational, thoughtful, and reliable. And then, of course, mobilize is motivational. Life, you're talking about lifeline? Yeah, lifeline is relational, thoughtful, reliable. Relational is blue, thoughtful is right. green, reliable. Right. So I just just translate okay. those. Okay. And then if they happen to be a passionista, I would do relational, 
motivational, and thoughtful. Now, at this point too, they should have the, in their packets, uh, the master list of all the core dr drills or the- or Yeah, packets. they should have the master okay. list, yeah. So you wanna make sure that w before you go into the leadership ones that they pull that out. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question uh, from a time standpoint. I'm supposed to go do something right about now. Are you available in about two hours? I'll be on a plane in two hours. So yeah, we can, can. I'll just have to regroup can, then. Yeah, we can regroup later this afternoon when I. Oh, okay. Late. Yeah. Uh, what time yeah. would that be, Eastern time? Hold on, let me check. I'm going to.